Hi everybody, Dan Olin, Matt Bernier, the DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Sunday, August the 27th is at Del Mar. Let's take a look at the field for the Grade 3 Tory Pine Stakes, carded as race number six. It's a hundred grander and head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com, download free Formulator Pass performances and handicap along with us. And this field might have some Breeders' Cup implications because the number one Paradise Woods, when she won the Santa Anita Oaks with a 107 buyer speed figure, she stamped herself as one of the better three-year-old fillies in the country. And I think you should take that Kentucky Oaks race with several grains of salt. Boy, she got the short comment. I usually don't agree with the short comments. I thought this one was appropriate. It's Hounded. perfect. Hounded. And caved. Yeah, because she, she packed it in badly, but understandably so. Miss Sky Warrior went at her hard. They threw it down. And keep in mind, that was a day where you needed to be forward. But it's almost one of those things, I don't care how strong the bias is, if you go suicidal, it ain't going to matter. And guess what? The Oaks completely fell apart. The pace was intense, to yeah. say the least. And it was a wet track. And she'd never yeah. set foot on a wet track before, which I think was the big concern as she tried to mile it in yeah. for the first time. I really liked what Mandela did after that race. He regrouped, he brought her back home, and he planned for the second half of the season. And he has very good formulator facts, Paradise Woods' trainer, Richard Mandela, with these kind of horses. Over the past five years, in three-year-old only races on dirt off a moderate layoff, limited positive data, 30% to $4 return on investment. Paradise Woods' speed should be put to good use from the inside post. I don't think the jock should fool around. And our time form U.S. pace projector agrees. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I know Flavian, you know, she's got good early gas, and you're breaking from the inside, short run into the first turn, might as well go. I, I have a sneaky feeling that four horse, delightful lady, is going to be intent trying to make the front. Well, Richard Baltus does have three, so he can perhaps sort of manipulate yeah. his runners and add to the pace scenario. Right there we have delightful lady sitting in second. We'll talk about her in a second because she's a player in this race for the simple fact that she's already beaten Paradise Woods. But let's yeah. start with Chocolate Coated, the number two, who certainly ran well in her first start on dirt. That was on August the 3rd, off a little bit of a layoff. She was bet like she wasn't going to lose, but she only faced a field of four. Yeah, only faced a handful of horses. You look at the speed figure, came back very, very light. Visually, there's nothing really to knock about it. Um, it is interesting, though, to compare different kinds of figures. From a buyer standpoint, woefully slow. Yes. From a time form standpoint, really not that far off. Earned about a 104. So, uh, again, facing winners for the first time is never an easy thing. But you could do worse with a, with a horse that figures to be in that 8, 10 to 1 range. Number three, Zapper Cat is one of the three Baltus train runners. And this filly showed some ability last year. Winning her maiden first time out at Del Mar, third in the chandelier. And she was the horse I wanted out of the chandelier. Yeah. The way that race shaped out from a pace scenario. And unfortunately, she got hurt after that race. She sent two starts back. Yes, she did win last time out. I just hated the way she won it. She had a really nice trip off a three-ply pace duel. It looked like she was spinning her wheels on the turn, and somehow, some way, she got it done. I guess class prevailed. Well, I think there was some other things, too. S.Y. Sky, she's a more sort of sprinty yeah. type. She's not Distance really a her. router. Spooky Woods just never panned out. She's not that good. Um, I hate that this filly just seems to have big gap after big gap after big gap. I mean... It would have been nice if we could have gotten a couple right. of races together now. It's just one of those things. I think she's very interesting. I picked her second. I think if she runs her race, Paradise Woods is going to need to run. I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm afraid that we've got too many things going the wrong way with her. Three and a half months off for Zapper Cat. Not, That's a very yeah. good point after that last one. You usually don't take sharp horses no. and lay them off. The four is Delightful Lady, and she's interesting because when you look at her career trajectory, it's not bad at all. In her debut, she ran against the monstrous Unique yeah. Bella. She got beat 15 lengths. We won't hold that race against her. Then she pulled off a surprise. She ran right by Paradise Woods yep. in that race at Santa Anita on January the 26th. But like Zapper Cat, lots of gaps in her racing. She came back at Del Mar off a long layoff as the favorite. I thought she had a really nice trip and she just couldn't punch in. You think she was just a short horse and with that prep, we'll see something better here? You could make that case too. And you also look at the time form US, the way that they have the pace situated that day. She was out there with a hot pace, and she paid That's the right. price. It's almost like you got sort of the two-for-one as far as the tune-up. Now the stretch-out. Um, she's interesting. Again, for me, if you're a fan of Paradise Woods or you're backing her, you're singling her, or whatever you're doing, to me, she, a delightful lady, is the one that could be the, kind of the fly in the ointment. And this is a move that Richard Baltus has yeah. used successfully in the past, as we see from our formulator fact. Over the past four years, in three-year-old only races, dirt second off the layoff, 28%, three and a half ROI, pretty good sample size yeah. there with 47 runners. The four is Mistress of the Night, and I know you've always been a little bit of a fan yeah. of Mistress of the Night. I still think you're not convinced that she's a miler, even though she won at this distance last time. I have to admit, I liked what I saw. It was a slow race, yeah. but it was also a slow 
incredible pace. And she was in and among horses, a little bit rank going into the first turn. Looked like she was in some traffic on the turn. But once she got outside, she came with a strong run. She went pretty easy. Yeah, she did. And especially, I don't think that Reiki baby, the horse that ran second, I don't think she's that bad. She may not look like a superstar, but I think she's okay. So there's just something for me anyway. I, not that Mistress of the Night is incapable of winning at two turns. I still think her best is going to be going six and a half or seven furlongs. I would like them to just continue on with her this way. And you know what? Maybe there's a chance that you end up in the La Brea and you're some giant price because people are going to look at your figs and say you're not that fast. I think she's going to be a one-turn horse. The key to her is the break, I think, because a lot of times she's her own worst enemy. She either doesn't break yeah. very well. She's rank coming out of the gate. So it's really up to Bayer on her to get her settled in behind horses, which I think will happen. I think the other speeds will go. And the interesting thing with her, too, you just look at her overall body of work. You know, we always talk about after nine, ten starts, how much more improvement is there she seems like the kind of filly that she doesn't take giant steps forward but she is slowly t two points three points two points one she's point. real solid she continues to slowly get better i'm not suggesting she's ever going to be a monster but i think she's going to be a useful sort of listed type at some point interesting spot for helen hillary for trainer phil damato trying dirt for the first time and doing so against paradise woods on the face of it, it seems like a real big ass it really does and it doesn't seem like a very common move for damato i suppose you just take a shot in here and you look at it we always talk about it too that black type is so valuable if you can get that on the dirt and what could be a suspect field Maybe turf is your home all along. Maybe this is just kind of a two-for-one take a shot. Bernina Starr got a big pace off a little bit of a layoff last time out sprinting at Del Mar and came with a big late run. It was nice to see that she's got that in her arsenal, yeah. considering that her only other lifetime win came in basically gate-to-wire yeah. fashion. When I see that, though, that big late run sprinting, it often doesn't translate to two-turn racing. Maybe she's going to wind up being a late running sprinter. Yeah, it's kind of what I'm thinking. She also got a really good pace to run at that day. I wonder from the outside, she's going to be forward. She may not be all the way on the lead, but I think she's going to be pressing it early on. Good news is she's sharp, and Jim Cassidy knows what to do with the sharp yep. horses. We see with this formulator fact. Past three years, last time winners on dirt, 25%. Lots of favorites, and they're not going to get that here. $2.29 ROI. Money spunts a little bit interesting, simply because last time, actually, was just in way too tough in the Rancho Bernardo. It's no disgrace to finish fourth behind Sky Diamond's Constellation Bendable, legitimate graded stakes caliber sprinters. Yeah. I don't know if this distance is her friend, but I have a feeling that Drayden Van Dyke's got to be aggressive coming out of there stretching out. If nothing else, it's a confident move from O'Neill wheeling her back in two weeks. Now, I know you're going back into three-year-old company as opposed to facing elders. I'm terrified of the distance. I know you've got hard spun on the bottom, but to me, she just doesn't act like a horse that distance is going to be her friend. But it could be a really shrewd yeah. claim. It looks yeah. like this filly's got some ability. She was in there with a chance, at least, at the quarter pole last amount, and those three then ran away yeah. from her older fillies. Let's take a look at our picks for the grade three Tory Pines. Paradise Woods is way the horse to beat. If yeah. she runs anything close to her Sandy to Oaks, she is going to win. Uh, I don't want to have a lot of money in against her. I, I, I picked her. I mean, I, everyone knows, common knowledge, I love her. I think she's awesome. I'm going to be fascinated to see what we get from her. More importantly, I want to know what kind of trip she's going to work out. Does she just wing it to the front, or does she sit off of a little bit? Because, again, I think that four horse is going to make life miserable if they are intent on the lead. I'm going to go with the five. Mistress of the Night, slight stab here. Just like the way she overcame some traffic issues last time out. Maybe Paradise Woods faces some heat. Baltus, I think, will send one of the other two, preferably the four out after her early. Yeah. Uh, it's not a confident selection. It's more along the lines of, if I can have someone run second to Paradise Woods, maybe at a decent price, it's her. Because from a fig standpoint, you know, she's just average. She, she's just average, and I think, again, she just continues to take slight steps forward. She's going to need to improve if she's going to be better. If you are playing the Sunday Del Mar card from home, please do so with DRF Bets. Summer is winding down, but you still can get a 10% win place takeout on 10 select tracks, including Del Mar, plus a $300 cash bonus. And you can learn more at drf.com forward slash take 10. Approximate post time for the Tory Pines and the return of Paradise Woods, the 6th at Del Mar on Sunday, 440 Pacific. Best of luck. Any way we could change that?